Hi, I'm Daniel Wong, and today we're going to be playing my favorite deck in modern, Blue-Red Taking Turns. So this is a combo deck based on the engine of Howling Mine and Time Warp. Howling Mine and its cousin Dictative Crufix let each player draw an extra card on each of their turns. And normally that effect isn't very good because it's symmetric, so you and your opponent are just drawing the same number of extra cards, and you're down a card because of the Dictate or the Howling Mine that you just played. But we get to break that symmetry with taking extra turns. Time Warp is the best extra turn effect at just 5 mana, and it doesn't exile itself, which means that Snapcaster Mage can flash it back. Our next extra turn effect is Part the Water Veil. It's a little more expensive at 6 mana, but we're really playing it for that 9 mana Awaken 6 ability, which turns one of our lands into a 6-6, and that ends the game very quickly. Temporal Mastery is our last extra turn effect. It's the most expensive at 7 mana, but we're mostly playing it for that Miracle ability to cast it for just 2. And Jace is basically a few extra copies of Dictate. Uh, we're mostly playing him for that zero ability, and it's really nice that Jace and Temporal Mastery interact so well, because you can draw three cards, then put Temporal Mastery back on top of your deck, and Miracle it next turn. Next, we have a couple pseudo extra turn effects in Exhaustion and Gekka So So exhaust Exhaustion just says creatures and lands your opponent's control don't untap, so that's mostly a time warp against most decks. Uh, it's not so great against, say, a mountain and a lightning bolt, but most of the time it does the job. Uh, Giga Drowse costs as much blue as you want it to, and you get that many copies of tap target permanent. So this is mostly used to tap your opponent's lands so that they can't develop their board, but you can also use it as a fog by tapping your opponent's creatures at the beginning of combat, or you can do both, just tap all of their lands and all of their creatures at their upkeep, and then they only have one mana to work with for the rest of the turn. Uh, it's also one of the reasons our control matchup is so good. You just play lands until you're ready to go off, then you Giga Drowse all of your opponent's lands, and because Replicate is like Storm, it creates extra copies of the spell, normal counter spells just don't work very well against Giga Drowse. Uh, next, we have some miscellaneous cards. Serum Visions is just a way to smooth out our draws. Lightning Bolt and Snapcaster Mage are our interaction and very flexible cards. That Lightning Bolt both kills creatures and kills the opponent. Uh, Cryptic Command is a nice counterspell, and the bounce mode of Cryptic Command comes in surprising handy against certain annoying permanents, like occasionally in Snaring Bridge. And Commandeer is the weirdest looking card here. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite cards, and I think one of the best reasons to be playing this deck. Uh, because of Howling Mine and Dictate, our bottleneck is often mana and not cards in hand. So Commandeer is a way for us to spend those excess cards in hand, especially like a Temporal Mastery that you can't really cast in the early turns of the game, and turn it into something reasonable. Uh, so Commandeer says you can exile two blue cards from your hand instead of paying its massive seven mana mana cost, and you gain control of target non-creature spell and can choose new targets for it. So it's best in the spell-heavy matchups where you get to take a Planeswalker. Uh, for example, when you take Karn on turn three, and take your opponent's tower, it's pretty good. Uh, it's obviously weak against decks like Humans, where they're basically only playing Aether Vial, but overall I think it's a very powerful card. Uh, for our mana base, we have 14 lands that produce red or are fetch lands and effectively produce red. So we got 5 fetches, uh, 3 shocks, 4 sulfur falls, which is great in a deck with a bunch of islands, uh, 1 Temple of Epiphany, which looks a little bit weird, but it's our only land that always enters tapped, and the scry ability is surprising, surprisingly relevant, uh, and Cascade Bluffs rounds out our red producing lands. Uh, we use a filter land here because we have a few cards in the sideboard that have double red in their mana costs. Um, speaking of the sideboard, so we've got three thing in the ice for our kind of transformational spells plan, where instead of needing to cast really expensive time warps at five six or seven mana we can just play a thing in the ice and then cast a few lightning bolts cast a few serum visions and end up attacking the opponent with a giant seven eight after bouncing their board uh, crackling drake is also fitting in with that plan uh, crackling drake is best against jun style decks where your opponent is going to try to grind you out and you won't necessarily be able to set up your full engine of howling mine and a bunch of mana for your time warps so top decking Crackling Drake late in one of those games is a great way to just have a really huge flyer that probably has around 10 power and it'll end the game in two hits. If your opponent has removal for it, it's okay because you already drew a card. And if they don't, they're probably going to die. Surgical Extraction is our graveyard hate. 
We have another copy of Commandeer for those spell-heavy matchups. And we have a lot of removal. So a Braid is a, a couple extra copies of spot removal. Anger of the Gods is a sweeper, and it's also very good against Dredge. Engineered Explosives as a kind of catch-all removal spell. Is that Static Caster for tokens? And Gelectrode is kind of a weird one. This one's primarily in there for the Spirits matchup because this lets you kill creatures that have two or more toughness pretty easily by just casting an extra spell. Yeah, so that's our deck, and I'll see you in round one. All right, so here we are for round one. We've won the die roll. And this hand looks pretty good. So we've got some lands, we've got a Dictate, we've got some interaction if our opponent's a creature deck. Uh, Commandeer is unfortunately not online, but hopefully we won't need it. Looks like we are probably going to lead with tapped steam vents, tapped steam vents, sulfur falls on three, dictate, maybe throwing in some bolts along the way. Our opponent is thinking very hard about whether or not their seven is good. I don't really think we can get any information about our opponent taking this long on their mulligan. It's possible they just had to get up and do something. Yeah, I think in terms of our hand being good, uh, if Lightning Bolt is a good card in this matchup, we're very well positioned here. Uh, we have a lot of good draws after this, like Snapcaster Mage. Um, on the other hand, if we're playing against something like KCI or Dredge, where Lightning Bolt is just not very effective, then we're going to have a tough time. Um, the good news is, for most of the decks that Lightning Bolt isn't good against, Commandeer is often a very good card. So hopefully we'll be able to get that online by drawing some blue cards if we need it. All right, our opponent is back, and it looks like they might be bottles. Um, they could be in trouble. Hopefully our opponent has some Core Spirit Dancers or something that we can bolt instead of an actual boggle. Otherwise, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. All right, well, the good news is we might be able to trick our opponent into thinking we're some other deck. Boggles is definitely a deck where both Lightning Bolt and Commandeer are not especially effective. Based on the way that our opponent has used up nearly three minutes of their clock playing a single creature, maybe this is how it's going to end. All right, two Hyena Umbras isn't that bad. We're only being hit for three. It would have been pretty terrible if our opponent had two, uh, what's it called, Ethereal Armors instead. So eh, it was not a good draw. We have nine points of burn in our hand. If not for that Ley Line, we would get our opponent halfway to dead. Eh, Daybreak Coronet's a little bit annoying, but it doesn't actually increase the clock by all that much. So we are going to cast the Dictate here because we are going to need it to win the game. We do need to hit our land drops. Uh, it's unlikely that we win this one, but we might be able to trick our opponent into killing Jace next turn. Alright, we're gonna need something good. does not quite count. All right, let's see if we die.
good news is our time warp is online. Bad news is we're dead next turn. So got to draw something pretty good in these next two cards. So in terms of things that count as good draws, uh, we can barely hit extra turn effects. Uh, obviously the best thing would be a Miracle Temporal Mastery. Let's see, does this have Trample? Does not. Neat. Well, as long as it doesn't have Trample, Snapcaster Mage blocks and lets us cast Dictate, so that's kind of cool. If our opponent finds uh, either the thing that gives this protection from creatures or... Uh, Rancor, the thing that gives it trample, then Snapcaster Mage is not enough. So we'll see if they find it. If we draw a land, we might as well bolt the Dryad Arbor so that our opponent has one fewer mana to work with. We did, so that's cool. Yeah, we are just shy of Snap Warping by one mana, unfortunately. So this is where we're at. All right, opponent, please don't kill us. It's a lot of lifelink. All right, hopefully our opponent does not have Path to Exile in hand. All right, Snapcaster Mage is incredibly dead. Our opponent is at a very high life total. Um, we are going to need a lot of good things to happen in order to win this game. All right, Cryptic Command is a good start. Uh, because we have six lands and we really want to hit a land drop, we're going to Serum Visions twice looking for a land. And that's a land. Nice. Um, hmm. Well, we definitely don't want another Dictate given the one in our hand. And I don't think we have any time to cast this Jace, even though one of the ways we win is going to be Jace plusing and ultimating. Hmm. I don't think that's how we're winning this particular game. Put this on the bottom. And let's try again, look for something better. Okay, that counts. Snapcaster Mage is good, but we're gonna want that Temporal Mastery on top. Okay, so now we're going to definitely beginning of combat Cryptic to tap our opponent's team. Ah, uh, shoot. All right, I messed up because we can't actually use the draw card mode on Cryptic Command if we want to Miracle that Temporal Mastery. Let's see, how much does that matter? If we Miracle Temporal Mastery, we get to cast Dictate and then kind of really go off. I'm going to tap my opponent's team and bounce this ley line so that we get to start bolting their face. Let's see. Turn back by that. Yeah, that mode. This thing. Oh, my opponent has a lot of creatures. All right, like I said, we're going to start bolting the face. All right, now we're going to set an upkeep stop. Oh, this is locked. We're going to set an upkeep stop so that we can cast Dictate and then uh, draw our Temporal Mastery and Miracle it. This just gives us access to an extra card. We have 
plenty of cards in our deck, 30 something. So hopefully we'll be able to 38 our opponent before that's all over. So this is a little bit of a weird play, but I'm going to, what is going on? Oh, okay. I was going to tap our opponent's land so that they can't path our Snapcaster Mage because we're going to need all of our Snapcasters in order to actually kill our opponent, but it looks like that's not what's happening. Uh, given the contents of our hand, I'm going to save the Snapcaster for a time warp. I could snap Bolt, but then we really need our next four draws to be good. This way, oh, I should have bolted the opponent. Uh, hopefully we'll have some mana left over at some point before we need to discard. All right, this is good. Part the Water Veil will help end the game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so this is our ninth land. I'm actually going to Snapcaster Mage and Time Warp rather than Part the Water Veil. And the reason Let's see. The reason is that we can't attack with the 6-6 six, six this turn anyway because we would need to tap it for mana. We need to tap the land for mana in order to uh, awaken part of the Water Veil. But on the other hand, if we do it this way, we get to attack next turn with Snapcaster Mage. All right, we don't need to tap anything. This is a few too many Giga Drowses. Don't need this upkeep stop anymore. Uh, I don't really think we're going to need any more dictate effects. Yeah, we've got plenty of stuff in our hand. Alright, I'm just going to awaken gemstone. Doesn't really matter what you want to awaken. I think it's usually pretty cool to awaken a snow land. We have a few too many giga drowses. We're in pretty good shape. It's pretty academic at this point. We have a lot of extra turn effects, a lot of extra draws. We have 21 cards in our library. We're not going to deck. The opponent is basically dead. Sure, whatever. I'm opting to play this island just so that tapping it is fewer clicks in moto. Uh, clean up. Sure, we don't need that. Sure, we don't need that. Snapcaster is very good. Uh, we do have a time warp in the yard. That's also very good. doesn't even matter our opponent's at low enough life total that this is lethal and just stop showing them cards I guess or stop showing them cards that they haven't seen I'm down to three I should have just snap bolted All right, for sideboarding, we're going to switch to plan B of let's have creatures. Um, so what's coming in? Thing the Ice is coming in. Crackling Drake is a little slow. Is it Staticaster and Electrode don't really do much? Anger. Anger is pretty medium. Uh, it is kind of important though because Boggle's opponents tend to bring in Gaddock Teague and you do need ways to kill Gaddock Teague, so I will bring in the Angers. It's coming out. Commandeer is not great. Um, take out a couple mine effects, a 
couple extra turn effects. Part of the water veil is too expensive. Let's see, do we need a braid? It's extra ways to kill Core Spirit Dancer and Gatatigue. I don't think it's super necessary. Let's submit like this. This is a tough one. This would be a great keep in the dark, but against Boggles, I'm not so sure. This hand really does nothing against Teague, and it doesn't interact with the opponent until turn four. Let's see. I guess our turn four play is tapping the opponent's team, so we won't die on turn four unless they manage to Teague us. It's a little questionable, but I'm going to keep it. There's also a question of, do we fetch with this Rainforest early so we can get our tapped Steep Nets, or... Do we try to just never play a fetch land this game so we have one more life to work with? Uh, given that we just drew a land, I'm going to see if we can avoid playing a fetch for the rest of the game. All right, so that's what I was afraid of, but if we have a bolt somewhere, we'll be in good shape. Uh, next turn, the Dictate will let us dig deeper to try to look for Lightning Bolt or Anger of the Gods. Uh, conveniently, this Cascade Bluffs lets us cast Anger next turn if we draw it. Ooh, that's real bad for us. How do we win this one? It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. My opponent has a pretty good hand. All right. Unfortunately, I think we need to dictate this turn, which means we're not serum visioning. That's rough. All right, well, the good news is we're not taking that much damage. It's only five. I wonder what's in our opponent's hand. Not castable. Three cards that aren't castable. Is it just all lands? Huh, well, that's not good for us. All right, it would be really nice if we could Cryptic Bounce, but we can't. It would be really nice if we could Lightning Bolt to kill, but we can't. Hmm, what are our ways out? It would be really nice if we could Engineered Explosives, but we can't. I think we're going to need a lot of Bolts and maybe a Snapcaster. As much as it sucks to put this bolt on top, I think it's part of the way we win the game. All right, let's try not to die for a couple turns. Ooh, that does not count as not dying for a couple turns. What do we need? Giga Jaws would be good. Another land is not so good. All right, that was a little rough. Hmm, should we change anything? Giga Jaws isn't great because it rarely hits the creatures. Hitting a lands is often fine though. I 
don't think Jelectro does enough. I just don't think a braid is good enough. We'll run it back. All right, this hand isn't amazing, but it's got Snapcaster Mage and Serum Vision, so we get a lot of extra looks at cards. Uh, we'll keep it. I think we want to take as little damage as possible off our lands here, so we're just going to fetch a basic island. We'll have another red. It's a little rough that we won't have double red in case we draw Anger or... Oh, we didn't board in Crackling Drake, but in case we draw Anger. But should be fine. All right, I like those two cards. We're going to have to make sure we don't play that Polluted Delta so that we can Miracle that Temporal Mastery. It will be pretty bad if our opponent casts uh, Gaddic Teague on two, but given that they played a Boggle this time with their six that they kept, I think it's much more likely that they're just on the Boggle plan than the Gaddic Teague plan. is maybe reading the card. So it's pretty good if we get to Miracle this Temporal Mastery next turn, basically if our opponent just doesn't cast Gaddic Teague, because then we'll have three counters, we'll get an extra land. If we can play Jace, that would be amazing, because we would get to Miracle another Temporal Mastery by zeroing. All right, that's not Teague. Great. We can get a free block here. Nice. Would like to reveal. And I would like to cast it. All right, so we're going to fetch a tapped steam vents with this polluted delta and do nothing else this turn. If we draw a land, I think casting Jace and bouncing the Spirit Dancer might actually be really good. Our other option is to cast Jace and put Temporal Mastery on top, which is also very, very good with our thing. Uh, on the other hand, if we don't draw a land, I think I'm going to Snapcast our Serum Visions, trying to draw something. All right, did not draw a land, so let's see if we can draw a land with this Serum Visions. Land. And land. We did it. Ooh. What's really nice about this is we get to cast Time Warp and then cast Time Warp, and this thing has two counters on it. Um, Giga Drow's would be nice but we're actually not going to get to draw it because we're going to crack the misty basically the only way we draw that is if our opponent teagues us so we can't time warp i don't think we're going to die this turn even three ethereal armors is only what nine power I guess it's more if the opponent puts it all on the Spirit Dancer, but even then we don't die. Huh, well, here's part one of things going really bad for us. I guess the only thing for things to actually go real poorly is if the opponent still has a path to exile in their deck and paths are things. So hopefully they just tap out. 
Ooh, that sucks. That sucks a lot. All right, so we're not going to crack this Misty so that we'll have Giga Drows available for next turn. Oh, man, that's really rough. Yeah, it would have been nice if we had this Jace online. Jesus Christ. So if we get a chance to chump this core spirit, oh, we don't get a chance to chump this core spirit dancer. Yep, we're going to take some damage. Okay. So the good news is... Uh, we're going to set an upkeep stop, first of all. We're going to get to tap our opponent's lands and also tap the Spirit Dancer. Thank you for fetching, opponent. So the bad news is we basically have one turn after this to draw a castable spell. Oh boy, this is my least favorite part of casting Giga Drows. Making sure you're targeting all the right things. All right, so basically we need to draw a castable spell to flip thing in the ice and then hopefully win the game. It will end up bouncing everything. It would be nice if the thing that we draw next turn is either Exhaustion or Giga Drows. That way we can just tap our opponent's lands or keep them tapped. They won't be able to replay Gaddic Teague, then we'll be able to time warp to the win. All right, we don't really care too much about that, and now we don't really care too much about Snapcaster Mage. Ooh, that's not it. All right. Good game, opponent. How close were we? Very. Good game, opponent. All right, see you for round two. All right, here we are for round two. We've lost the die roll. I assume we're going second. Uh... Sand's a little bit light on lands. Uh, we do have Jace. Typically you want at least one uh, Howling Mind effect in your opener. The problem with Jace, of course, is that he costs four, and when we're going second, it's pretty reasonable that most opponents will be able to kill him. The Sand isn't great, but I'm going to keep it and hope that the strength of Serum Visions gets us there. I think we're playing against humans. Yeah, Jace would definitely be better as a Dictate or a Howling Mine here just because getting attacked by your opponent's creatures is such a liability. Uh, this was not a very good draw. Hmm. Let's get a lightning bolt and put lightning bolt on top, please. All right, well, that's part of the way there. Uh, we'll put lightning bolt first, and that way it won't get got by a kite sail freebooter. I 
guess the opponent would have to freeboot us on three, which would be weird, but it's still better to have dictate in hand only when you can cast it rather than when it can get free bootied. I'm going to lead on the Cascade Bluffs over Shocking on Steam Vents because our opponent might play Thalia and we might not be able to play that uh, that Dictate on... This looks like a Freebooter. That Dictate on 3 anyway. So we'll see how it plays out. Alright, we're getting freely booted. We could, if we do get to shock ourselves with the steam vents, our opponent will kind of know what's up, but it's worth it to get the dictate down on three and try to draw a land for Jace or something. Maybe get a drowsing on four, trying to time warp on five. We definitely have a plan to win this game. We just, just need to get there. So one thing that's kind of tough here is do we bolt the Hierarch or do we bolt the free Freebooter? Or do we just wait? And I'm going to say we just wait because one of the worst things that can happen to us is Thalia. Uh, but we are definitely going to bolt something this turn, which is why we played the Cascade Bluffs. We'll just figure out what it is. The right thing to bolt here is very, very dependent on what's in our opponent's hand. Uh, if they don't have any lands, bolting the Hierarch obviously would have been good, but we have no way to know that since they haven't missed a land drop yet. Uh, on the other hand, if they play some, all right, if they play something like Thalia or Meddling Mage, we would probably rather wait to bolt it. If they play Meddling Mage, it seems very likely that they would name Time Warp, just given the two in our hand that they saw with the Freebooter. Uh, so we probably would need to bolt that. If they play Thalia, we'll definitely need to bolt that so we can get the Dictate down next turn. Let's see what happens. Definitely need to kill that on instep. Definitely going to kill that on instep. Now, like I said, we're going to shock on the steam vents. Opponent will kind of know what's up, but we need to to get that dictate down. All right, our plan right now is dictate on three, Giga Jaws on four, hopefully draw land, warp on five. That's interesting. So Phantasmal Image is very, very weak to Giga Drows. I assume this is copying Kitesail Freebooter. It's copying Hierarch. Okay. So we could change plans here and Giga Drows their creatures. The reason to do that is we have a unique opportunity to kill this Kitesail Freebooter right now because it has that when it gets targeted ability. Um, that also means we'll keep the Dictate, but it means we, we won't play the Dictate and we're a lot less likely to hit our land drop. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to get Gidraz now, Dictate on our own upkeep so that we can try to hit a land drop. Uh, we're missing turn four, but hopefully our opponent won't be able to kill us. We'll be at a uh, pretty healthy life total of 15. And hopefully we'll be able to go off from there, but a lot of things could go wrong. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I need to tap this in a different order. Good old Magic Online, you filter lands. Wait. Oh, no. Whoops. Well, I meant to cast Gek Drows. All right, let's see how this plays out then. <laughs> uh, 
That's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, that's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, we would have been two life higher. Our opponent would have one less mana to work with, except I guess they would just tap that in their main phase, so not really, and they would be down a creature. That is embarrassing. All right, so that one mana didn't actually matter. Okay, that's nice. Let's draw a land, though. This is pretty bad for us because we can't really win the game very easily next turn. Yeah, hitting these time warps is bad. The opponent having access to extra cards and extra mana is not great. All right, well, this is our opportunity to redeem ourselves from last time. Giga Drow's this, tapping this one, oh, replicating twice, tapping this one first. All right, and this time we're just going to save ourselves the most damage by targeting this and then targeting that. We might take a point, maybe two if the opponent files in a Hierarch, but won't be taking that much damage this turn, so that's good. We're also unlocking our Giga Drows, which is kind of nice. So if we draw a land, we get to Giga Drows our opponent again, which is pretty cool. All right, so we have lands for the next two turns, so that's great. Giga Drows in our hand is also great. Uh, so we'll be able to hit four things. So I think it makes the most sense to, at our opponent's upkeep, hit Aether Vial and all of their mana source. Oh, wait, I said four. Hmm. So the issue is that the two drops are the problem. So we can hit Aether Vial. The opponent didn't play a land, so I think it makes sense to hit Aether Vial and... Ziggurat, Cavern, Cavern. Uh, that makes it hardest for the opponent to play something like another Kite Sail Freebooter. Um, the opponent also knows about our Bolt. Let's see. So the, the problem permanents are Kite Sail Freebooter, Thalia, and Meddling Mage. Meddling Mage on Time Warp would be pretty bad right now, um, especially because we can't Bolt and Time Warp in the same turn. Yeah, the best way for our opponent to not have those on the battlefield is for us to tap Aether Vial and three mana sources. Then the opponent needs a mana source and the problem permanent in order to actually do anything. So we definitely want to respond to this trigger so that the opponent can't put a CMC2 creature in response. Let's tap correctly.
Come on, opponent. I've cast this spell before. All right. Please don't Thalia us. Please don't Meddling Mage us. And please don't Kite Sail Freeboot us. I guess out of those, Kite Sail Freebooter is the least bad. So. Well, that was in the wrong order, but we get to try to go off. Okay. Or our opponent just doesn't want to play anymore. So we are again switching to plan, take out a couple dictates, a couple warps, a commandeer. Gagadrows is great because of phantasmal image. Um, we're going to go up. Interaction, Afraid and Anger are both great. Engineered Explosives is pretty good. I believe is that Staticaster and Electrode are probably both in here. Let's see. Staticaster is, what's wrong with my zooming? All right, apparently I don't know how to make a card zoom correctly. Whatever. Staticaster is good against uh, Thalia. So is Gelectrode. All right, we need to cut some more cards. Uh, Jace is not great against a deck that produces a bunch of creatures. Temporal Mastery gets worse when we have fewer Jaces. We need to cut two more. They sometimes run Graph Digger's Cage, so we'll trim one Snapcaster. Hmm. What else? Exhaustion isn't always great against Aether Vile decks, but it is pretty good. We can afford to cut a single land when we're decreasing the curve by this much, taking out a lot of warps, a mastery, the part of the water veil. Right, we're putting in a lot of two and three CMC things. All right, let's run it like that. While the opponent's thinking about what to sideboard, let's figure out how to zoom. I thought it was Q. Is it middle click? I really just don't understand how Magic Online works. It is Q. Okay. No? Yes? Yes? It is Q. Oh, my computer's just lagging. Great. Sam looks pretty good. So we can save Serum Visions to try to flip thing in the ice, or we can just try to set up better draws. I think our hand's pretty decent, so I'm actually just going to save it to try to flip thing in the ice faster. We also have a lot of shots at a land before turn three. Well, on the other hand, I don't think we can afford to wait on bolting this Noble Hierarch. So let's bolt the Hierarch. This will pay two life. And zap. Hopefully that slows the opponent down a reasonable amount. All right, so notably those are both on human. How did the opponent not play anything? Are, are they on the mono three drop hand? 
Well, I'm still going to cast Thing. I'm still going to go according to plan. I'm very confused what's in our opponent's hand. I guess it could be like all Sin Collectors and... Hmm. Sin Collectors and Mantis Riders and... I don't really know. <laughs> Maybe they F6 on accident? No, that's too good. Okay, what's happening to us? Sins are being collected. I think our best card in hand is actually Serum Visions right now. So you could definitely make the argument for Giga Drows. Cryptic Command looking pretty terrible. Okay. I am fine with that. I am also fine with that. This makes us a little bit more vulnerable to future Sin Collectors, but I think getting a Gelectrode down, especially with things still on four, is going to be pretty good. Opponent maybe reading this card. So one kind of unfortunate thing here is we're going to want to next turn Serum Visions, but we have the Scalding Tarn that will shuffle away our, uh, our Scry. But we don't know if we need double red because we don't know if we're drawing Anger. Um, so we could fetch a tapped Steam Vents next turn, but the issue there is we might also want to Mikokoro. And if we Serum Visions and then we only have an untapped Steam Vents and a tapped Steam Vents, so that's not enough mana. So I'm guessing next turn we'll probably fetch for an island and then Serum Visions, leaving Mikokoro up. Uh, we'll feel pretty bad if we draw Anger of the Gods, but with the Gelectrode on board, I think that's okay. Our opponent so far not especially invested in the games, it looks like. They're just taking a long time for some reason. So we could very easily be getting our sins collected once again. We'll see how it goes. All right, so we're probably going to need to shoot down that Champion of the Parish before it gets out of hand. It looks like there's a Mantis Rider coming also. I think our opponent didn't tap for red mana. Oh, wow. That's not good. That is not good at all. Well, the opponent only has two cards in hand, so at least that's something. Hmm. So now we're definitely going to want to... Oh, wait, no, we can't cast Gelectrode. Right, that's how this card works. Hmm. Yeah, still going with crack this. I think our plan is to flip this thing in the ice before Champion of the Parish gets out of hand. 
The opponent has another Reflector Mage, which is very possible, given their lack of a play on two. Then we're in some trouble. I really don't know how many Reflector Mages they would keep in, though. It seems kind of weird. All right, I have some regrets. Uh, neither of these cards seem pretty good right now. We are really looking for an anger or for a red source for this anger now, I think. Although the opponent will probably grow the champion out of range. This is just too bad. Um, the good news is we have two shots at an untapped land with this Mikokoro, and if it's a tap land, then it's Temple, which is a red source for anger. So one way or another, we're gonna have something. Yeah, that's not good for us. Now we just need a red source for anger. If we draw an island, probably in a time warp, just because it's so important we get this red source. Wiping the opponent's board seems pretty good right now. I think we're going to Serum Visions, look for a red source. This Exhaustion is pretty good right here. Probably better than playing an Electrode. Gelectrode, that will die to anger. Okay. Our opponent thinking long and hard about countering the Serum Visions. So if we do find a red source for next turn, our plan is probably going to be to Thing in the Ice and then Anger. So Thing in the Ice will survive. We'll hopefully wipe our opponent's board as long as they don't play another human. Okay. Um, how good is Snapcaster right now? Pretty decent, but we don't want that many. Yeah, having access to Snap Anger is pretty good. Snap Bolt, also pretty good. Snap Serum Vision is also pretty good. We want one, I think. And there's our red source, which is nice. Unfortunate that we're just going to scry that Snapcaster to the top, but what can you do? Please no human so we can thing anger. Well, that's unfortunate. Champion's gonna live, but we still need to make this play. Uh, we're going to seven, champion's at four. Yeah, we still need to make this play. Definitely super unfortunate that uh, that the champion is living, but that's where we're at. We maybe have a snap block bolt on it in a future turn. Also, the fact that we have no mines in play means the opponent is only drawing one card a turn, which is pretty good for us. 
Um, I also think depending on what we draw, I might be willing to just warp to take a counter off thing and draw a card. It seems kind of worth it. And then we can flip it at will by Snapcaster Mage Serum and then leaving Giga Draws open. So hopefully our opponent doesn't have a one drop into Thalia's Lieutenant because then we'd be forced to chump here. Or Mantis Rider. That would be bad too. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad too. All right, well, we are forced to jump here. Let's see, what can we draw? There's always the one of the two Miracle Temporal Masteries into Gelectrode. That would be cool, but still probably not good enough. Hmm. It's also probably not good enough. So I think the current plan is Snapcaster, block here, bolt this, sorry, bolt this one, the Mantis Rider. Hopefully Champion will be small enough that we can do that. So that's three mana, and then we have two left over to play with. Other options include Giga Drowsing the team, but then we're just not getting anywhere. We might as well time warp if we're doing that. I think let's start Visions with the plan of Snapcaster, chump that, bolt that. Let's take another look at the graveyard, I guess, while we're waiting for this lovely spell to resolve. Hmm. So here's some interesting stuff. We do have land warp now, which is basically just explore, so that next turn we can draw the flooded strand, snap warp. Uh, dang, then we're not drawing this warp. Hmm. Yeah, we also basically need the snapcaster for bolt. Yeah, these are interesting, but we're not doing enough on our extra turns, I don't think. That's rough. Hmm. Yeah, that's rough. All right, we really need something. That was interesting.
wonder if our opponent just has lands in hand and that's why they didn't cast a human before combat here to pump that small champion of the parish that is pretty weird anyway i think next turn we're probably just gonna tap some lands cast electrode and then probably giga drows as a fog at the beginning of combat unless something goes wrong here which it looks like it might be banned opponent might be trying to cast knight of autumn I don't really know what's going on here. Okay. Okay. Um. Hmm. Yeah, we don't have much life, but it is what it is. Um, tapping Mikokoro, so we have as many, oops. So we have as many blue sources as possible. I don't think we can afford to tap these at upkeep and also tap two lands because then if the opponent just... No, they can't possibly have Mantis Rider. Tap these two, tap these two. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really hard for the opponent to play a haste creature. We're going to upkeep, tap the creatures in two lands. I'm going to tap the lands that make it most difficult for our opponent to cast Phantasmal Image or Knight of Autumn. Yeah, we're not going to tap that Aether Vial. I don't think we're concerned about humans that cost one right now. Hmm. Am I just lagging? I just do the wrong number here? Oh dear. Oh dear. Might have to restart Magic Online soon. I wonder if the opponent's going to speed up in the last five minutes. I think this is still game two. I should have always yesed to that, but whatever, I'll do it next time. Interesting. I'm going to try to kill the creatures first. I don't think we'll be able to chain enough time warps together to kill the opponent here, especially since we took out a bunch. 
All right, so let's always yes this. So, hmm. So time warping is nice, but we don't actually have a mind effect. So I think I'm actually just going to exhaustion the opponent. Uh, the rough part is they could play a freebooter, they could play a Thalia. There's a lot of things they could have, but given that they haven't been playing those cards and they had the mana available, I'm just going to hope they don't draw it. Uh, this leaves Mikokoro available, so that if we draw another land, we'll have 8 mana, uh, 5 for Time Warp, and then 3 for Mikokoro. That'll be actual progress. It's just a little bit concerning that there's an Aether Vial going to 2 on the other side of the battlefield. The other consideration here is, how long is that 4 minutes? We're at 12. Oh, that, that is not a card that I care about right now. Kind of weird. Generally you want to wait on that until I cast a Snapcaster Mage and then you can fizzle the ability by doing that in response. Maybe they just wanted to save clock. We'll go face with this. And draw with this. Okay, so we got that land we wanted. Um, that was not a very good draw though. I don't think there's anything I could draw that would make me not cast this spell here. So I'm just going to do this first. Draw a card. Neat. I can never seem to draw that card in the correct order. I guess we should uh, not attack with this, but ping the opponent again. I can never seem to draw that card in the correct order. Let's see. So we're one mana short of Temporal Mastery and Mikokoro, but I think we can Thing in the Ice and Temporal Mastery. Let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, let's do that. It's not important here, but you should stack the thing in the ice trigger below the Gelectro trigger so that you can... Oh no, oh no, oh no, I missed a ping. Oops. Oh, so that you can ping the opponent before uh, doing stuff. If we lose by one, I'm going to be really sad. Hmm. All right, let's... Try to draw a Snapcaster or an extra turn effect. Oh, I guess Snapcaster, we're one mana short. All right, well, I guess we're passing the turn. Opponent now has a lot of ammo, so that's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, if we lose by one point, I will be very, very disappointed in myself.
So I think our avenue to victory is actually going to be Thing in the Ice attacking twice since our opponent's at 14. Um, all right, let's see what this is. Sin Collector only takes instants or sorceries, if I recall correctly. Yeah, instant or sorceries, so we're just going to get rid of that. This is going face. And then our opponent will be unable to take this Dictate. We'll play it at end step still in case our opponent has Knight of Autumn, then they won't be able to kill it. And I believe we're going to chump this champion of the parish with our electro Gelectrode. Thinking too much about Pokemon. Alright, take a look. I'm going to draw some extra cards. How do you feel? Ooh, that's a Mantis Rider. Good work opponent we're gonna make them actually do the attacks so that they spend a little bit more clock and maybe lose the next game with not that much clock left neat uh, now we're going to just swap out the gemstone cavern for that island we took out Moto still remembers I was pressing Q from earlier. All right, we'll run it like that. And we will play first. Uh, this hand has a thing in it. Nothing else incredible, but it's probably good enough. Also, two red sources, so we won't be in that situation where we fetch awkwardly and maybe can anger and maybe can't. Our opponent mulligan. Our opponent has very little time left. Don't want to say we're definitely going to win, but this is looking good for us. So we could have braided this turn, but I don't think the opponent's going to get that out of a braid range, and even if they do, we have uh, Giga Drows and Exhaustion to deal with it. So I think we just want to get the thing down and start uh, taking counters off. Next turn, we can either Exhaustion the opponent or a Braid, depending on what happens. Man, if there's another one drop. Uh, since the opponent only spent one mana, it doesn't really make much sense to exhaustion. Uh, I think I will upkeep Giga Drows, though, since the opponent is very unlikely to grow this champion, since they didn't play a one drop this turn. And then we can probably just try to exhaustion a couple times and go from there. So I'm going to hit all of our opponent's mana sources so that they're very unlikely to play anything relevant this turn. So one drop this turn would bring Champion into attacking range, but again, I don't think that's super relevant. We're just going to exhaustion them if that happens. Opponent also has 13 seconds to win this game, which I don't think is going to happen. All right, well, it's unfortunate that our opponent timed out, but I'll see you in round three. All right, here we are for round three. We've won the die roll. 
and hmm. Sand isn't amazing, but we've got two lands, a Serum Visions, and a Jace. That's pretty decent. If we get to five lands, we get to Time Warp. Hand's not great, but I'm going to keep it. Giga Drows is maybe fine, maybe going to buy us time. Generally, when we have a Jace in hand, I like to use my Giga Drowses more aggressively. Hmm. This time warp would be really good in the best case scenario when we stick Jace, but I don't think we can afford to keep it. I, hmm. I do think we want a fourth land. So depending on what the opponent does, I think I'm probably gonna, oh, nice, Tron. Did I did I bottom? That's embarrassing. Well, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little that's a little awkward now. Well, one of the weird plays we can make now is we can tap the tower. Uh, this will prevent our opponent from cracking the map next turn if we do it at upkeep because they won't ever have access to two mana. So since we're just tapping one thing, I think I'm going to play this scry land, see what's up. Now I think we need this land. And yeah, if the opponent's upkeep, going to tap that tower. So the opponent is unlikely to turn three Tron us. Of course, they could have natural Tron. They always do. But we'll probably be able to Jace. Yes, we will be able to Jace, which is great. Um, I'm going to save this fetch land in case we draw another land. Then we can Jace and uh, Jace and Shuffle. Of course, we're probably going to have to crack for a basic island, but like, whatever. Hmm, what's this? Oh, Sylvan Scrying? No, okay. Just doing that now, sure. All right, yeah, so we will have to uh, find that basic island because we didn't draw land, but that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna probably put back this lightning bolt and this temporal mastery. I'll make sure to do it in the correct order. And of course we could be getting Trond next turn, but there's nothing we can do about that now. So bolt first, mastery on top, and pray that they don't have it. They never don't have it. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right, well, good news is we're drawing Bolt. After this mastery, of course. And the Bolt will actually be good. Yeah, we'll be able to Bolt and Time Warp, since we really do want to find something good. So I'm not going to crack that Tarn. So I want to draw this Bolt. This turn I'm going to Time Warp and Bolt. Time Warp isn't great here because it's just Explore, but we really need to find something. Our opponent has Tron. Explore us into something good. That's not it. Huh. Well, we are two lands away from awakening this part of the Water Veil, so I think that's going to be the plan. Of course, this is real bad against uh, another Tron land in an Ulamog, but plans can't be good against everything. Also not great against World Breaker, but I don't think they play that very much main board. And we can counter any big spell. Oh, this looks like maybe an Ulamog. No? Hmm. All right, well, if the opponent's out of big payoff cards, that'd be very good for us.
Okay. What in the world are they using this much green mana for? That is not okay. Hmm. I think we're going to cycle this time warp and again try to hit something good. We are still two lands away from awakening. We are one land away from awakening. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. All right, probably not winning this game now. Probably not winning this game now. We really needed a mine of some sort. Um, I am actually going to cast this part of the Water Veil, and here's why. The way that we win this game well, we're now no longer close to awakening this. The way that we win this game is going to involve Cryptic Command, tap this, oh, come on, shorter red spell. But yeah, Cryptic Command, tap this, draw a card, and this needed to be a land so that we could cast a Dictate, uh, and then draw two good cards and go off from there. But as it stands, I think we're just going to die. But let's, let's let the opponent do stuff. Maybe we can put something crazy together, we do have to tap this and draw a card. Yeah, maybe we can string something crazy together, but that's definitely not it. Bolt looking pretty terrible here. I guess I shouldn't have six. is in their hand. I've already shown the opponent a bolt. I think I might bolt the opponent at end step. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how we win this one, but I think it's going to involve bolting the opponent at end step. We're pinched on red mana now, so. All right, don't really care about that. Oops. Well, that was a mistake. Went a little bit too far, but we are dead now anyway, so it didn't matter. All right, so as badly as that went, I actually consider this a very good matchup for us. Uh, so this is more about just taking the bolts out of our deck than it is about doing anything else. So take the bolts out. This is fine. Yeah, lightning bolt, pretty horrific. Commandeer would have been amazing there if we could have taken that Karn. We would have won that game easily. Taking out bolts is also nice because then we have a few more blue cards, which, as you saw at the end of the game there, it makes it easier to get Commandeer online, and Commandeer is going to be one of our best resources. Uh, one of the weird parts is sometimes it's hard to tell if you should Commandeer an early Sylvan Scrying or Expedition Map, or 
just try to go after the payoffs. The issue is sometimes the payoffs are creatures. Sometimes it's just a big walking ballista or it's Ulamog like it was last time. Um, and in that case, Commandeer doesn't do anything since that's only uh, it's only non-creature spells. How do I still not know how to zoom in? Oh, that's why. All right, let's go first so that our opponent doesn't turn three Tron us. This hand looks okay. These hands look, or these cards look pretty decent. A fourth land for Jace and a time warp if we hit our fifth land. Yeah, I'll top both. Do you want to hit land drops with this deck? So it looks like next turn we're probably going to Steam Vents tapped. The following turn we're probably going to Dictate. The following turn we're probably going to Jace. Or the opponent could just, you know, natural Tron us. That's cool too. So we might have a change of plans. We might be exhaustioning the opponent. Uh, we might be exhaustioning the opponent just to delay Karn by a turn. Uh, that way, if they crack their map, their tower and their power plant are still tapped. Uh, the reason to do that is so we get Cryptic Command online. We'll be able to hold up Cryptic on turn four. And if the opponent doesn't do anything meaningful, we get to Dictate. Kind of sucks, but I think it's what we got to do. Of course, the worst thing here is if the opponent just has the mine and the Karn in hand, then this just looks really stupid. But what can you do? All right, well, the good news is we're not getting Karned this turn. We have a, that was a mine. All right, let's see what they hit. Artifact, sorcery, this thing costs 11. If they play a tower, they have access to 10 next turn. That's an interesting one. Um, so we could exhaustion again, but we actually just don't have a land for the following turn. It's just not good. Uh, the game could be over if the opponent just goes tower Ulamog, but we are not winning this game if that's what they have in hand. If they play something we don't care about, I'm going to play the Dictate. Uh, something I, we don't care about would be like a Worm Coil Engine. Uh, I guess for now an Ugin, as much as that sounds crazy. Yeah, if they play Karn, we gotta got to do something about that. So one interesting play here is we could counter Karn and bounce a land, but because we're not going off next turn and we're going to miss a land drop, I think we just want to draw a card. Hmm, that's not good. We really need to hit a land drop. I think our best line to victory is to draw a land time warp, draw another land, and then exhaustion the opponent and have crypt or have a dictate up. That way the opponent just won't have much available and we'll be able to go off from there. One of the really annoying things about the Tron deck ever since Oath of the Gatewatch is they get a counter spell they can cast off. Oh, that's not a land. They get a counter spell they can cast off of, uh, off of a single land in Warping Whale. And we really need to hit this land drop, so we might get mind slavered here, but 
there's not too much we can do about that. Well, there's land. Um, I don't really think it matters too much what we put on top. We can't really stop the opponent from messing with our own stuff. Yeah, I'm just going to... Actually, I should think harder about this. This could be important. What is going to happen? We're going to play a land. We're going to have access to five mana. We're going to miss our next land drop if Jace dies, which is pretty likely. So we won't be able to do that play I said of Exhaustion Dictate, but we could do something like Exhaustion Howling Mine. So I think we want to keep Exhaustion and Howling Mine as not the last card. Although if we get... Thought not seared, which is a possibility. I think Howling Mine is our most important card right now, so we'll do something like this. There's a lot of ways we lose this game now, but we'll we'll see. I think this gives us the best chance of victory. Let's see, our opponent has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten mana. So ooh, no. What? Oh, there's Planeswalker. Oh. Uh. All right, well, the good news is I don't even know how much our opponent can mess with us. Oh, I know what the opponent can do. Let's see if they see the line. Time Warp is a targeted spell. I forgot about that. Let's see if they find the line. I think the opponent might be trying to exhaustion me. That doesn't work because exhaustion says target opponent. And the opponent is still the opponent. All right, they're trying to see if we hid the goodies from them. We didn't. Interesting. All right, they found the line. I think we're dead. What? Phone man takes an extra turn after this one. Hmm. Cast time warp targeting. I misunderstanding this. When you cast the spell, gain control of target opponent during that player's next turn. After that turn, that player takes an extra turn. Yeah, my understanding of extra turns is that they stack on top, so the opponent should have taken their time warp turn before we get to do anything. Um, I 
yeah i'm real confused i i guess like they said we'll we'll see uh so we're taking a big hit here and then if they do get two turns in a row we die so the only way we don't die is by exhaustioning and jacing i believe so i think it's exhaustion jace howling mine seems like the play is jace minus two to bounce this so we don't take 13. um does mean the opponent could mess with us again but we'll we'll see what happens we'll get there when we get there interesting this does say extra turn so it looks like uh the opponent will get another turn after this one am i just misunderstanding how extra turns work or is that a bug Ooh, well, that's not good for us. That's not good one bit. Ooh, that is also very bad. This also adds artifact and creature, so it looks like our opponent can cast a pretty cheap Emrakul. Yep. All right, things are going downhill real quick. What do we need? I mean, the good news is the opponent can't really do anything with us on this Mindslaver turn. They can basically just waste the two Snapcasters, and that's pretty much it. We don't really have enough mana to do anything meaningful anyway. But anyway, how do we get out of this? Uh, probably involves miracling a temporal mastery and then casting dictate. Yeah, the opponent can't even cast that. So, I guess there's an argument for targeting serum visions and then trying to screw us with the dries, with the, the with the scries, basically just fate seal too. Um, Hmm. So we are at six mana right now. So the two primary options I see are Thing in the Ice with Cryptic up or try to hold up two Dictates. If we had seven mana, I think I would not play Thing in the Ice so we can hold up Dictate and Cryptic. But as it stands, I don't think that's actually a good idea. I think it's much better if we can cast cryptic command and i think we're probably going to need to opponent has a lot of cards in hand so let's get this thing down and probably counter a spell if we don't need to counter a spell that's great we'll just get to play a dictate and yes that means we missed out on one but you know whatever yeah letting this attack happen because it's definitely more important that we counter whatever crazy spell our opponent's going to play unless of course if it's ulamog in which case we just lose the game anyway actually if it's ulamog our opponent is heavily incentivized to go after thing in the ice so if they hit thing in the ice and only one land we have a lot of live draws because we'll get to play that dictate and we'll be drawing two cards a turn as it stands the opponents just can drip in a bit I don't think we care about that one. Sanctum of Eugene, that's fine. Let's 
still don't think we care about that. All right, where's this tower? Also fine. Playing the Tower of Power. Expedition map is also A-OK. -okay. a lot of tutors. All right, well now I feel a little bit silly for having not double dictated, but that's okay. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. So I think the plan now is to tap the opponent's team at beginning of combat so we don't die or at 10, that's 13. Um, we're still dead to walking ballista, I think. This is 3, 6, 10, 14, 15, 16 mana is 8. Uh, let's see, they could fetch for... Where's this tower? Is 9? I guess, yeah, if we shock the steam vents, which we're going to have to, then we'd be at 8. Uh, the reason we're shocking is then we have cryptic dictate. Yeah, there's really nothing else we can do. A little unfortunate that our opponent is drawing two cards, but hopefully they're just both blanks. Um, so here's an interesting one. We can uh, tap our opponent's team and bounce the Snapcaster Mage. And if we do that, then we get to next turn Snap Time Warp. The main reasons not to is this is bad against Warping Whale and this is bad against... Uh, the other one relic or graph digger's cage um any sort of graveyard hate really but we're not beating warping whale anyway since we need to take extra turns so i think we're going to take that risk uh where is it turn time time will creature opponent's control um the reason it's not good against warping whale of course is the opponent gets to exile snapcaster mage and then we don't tap their team and we die so hopefully that doesn't happen Nice. Step one. Step two is our opponent not having any big spells to play. Please, opponent, have mercy. Ooh. That is bad for us. Yeah, that... That is bad for us. Rough. So opponent is probably going to blow this Osta. Hmm. Are they? I don't know, we'll see. We can't really afford to play this Dictate because then the opponent just blows the O-Stone and we have no way to win. Uh, okay. Of course, the opponent, if they do blow the O-Stone, will kill their own Emrakul. So I don't know if the opponent is actually going to do that. I stopped paying attention to what's going on. Puts Chromatic Sphere into, okay. What else did I miss? Probably Nurse's Tower. Opponent has not played Sanctum. Well, if the opponent doesn't pay attention and 
taps too low for this oblivion stone we actually just get to play this dictate and hope to go off Tap out for something. You know you want to play a warm coil engine. You know you want to. Hmm. Drag tusk? What is this? No, don't control Z. Come on. Come on. Bummer. All right, yeah, now we can't play this Dictate because they'll just pop the O-Stone. Ooh, that's nice. All right, so the bad news is we still can't really... Uh, cast this dictate or this thing in the ice because we just don't have anything to uh, beat this O stone with. On the other hand, we could play the dictate to bait out popping the O stone, which would also kill Emrakul and buy us another turn. And then we do have one, two, three, four, five, six. We do have seven mana for Commandeer, so we could actually just not play thing and have Commandeer up. It's not the worst. Well, let's start by attacking. I think we're actually going to do that. It feels really weird. Um, maybe the opponent just pops the O stone here. Yeah, this feels really weird. This could easily be a huge mistake, but getting the opponent to pop the O stone is pretty good in that it also kills Emrakul here instead of putting a fate counter on Emrakul, popping the O stone, making us have something for Emrakul and also dying to the O stone. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so I think our play now is to hope our opponent goes with a non-creature spell that we can three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that we can commandeer. And our opponent just didn't have a lot. What does Sanctum get exactly? Okay. Clear colorless creature card. Okay. That's not good. Or is it? That's not good. That's not good. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hmm. Hmm. So we would have been dead to the opponent just pumping the ballista, but I guess they were trying to play around uh, Cryptic Command by doing that, which is pretty reasonable. All right, yeah, Commandeer looking a little foolish now. Would have been pretty good against that O-Stone, though. All right, well... guess if what we're doing is playing thing in the ice and praying then that's what we need although i think we might be dead to just walking ballista getting pumped let's see 369 11 13 15 17 18 19 that's yeah if the opponent untaps we actually just lose all 
All right, well, I don't know what we need to draw, but I guess that's a step towards it. Well, I guess we lose now. Actually, we do have one shot. Oh, wait, no, we're short of mana. No, no, we do have one shot. Our one shot is to draw a one mana thing now. That's not it. The reason that would work is it would force our opponent to use Walking Ballista on Thing in the Ice. But as it stands, we are just dead. Yeah, the opponent can just pump the Walking Ballista and kill us. I'm going to still tap their creatures and make them do it. Tap the creatures at beginning of combat anyway. Just make them pump the Walking Ballista and then we die. But if opponent doesn't see it, they didn't see it. It's a lot of towers. They see it. All right, well, it's unfortunate to lose that matchup. I very much consider this a matchup in our favor, but I'll see you for the next round. All right, here we are for round four. Our opponent has won the die roll. Um... Got a Serum Visions, a Jace, two lands. I feel like this happens a lot. Uh, we've got Commandeer this time, which is pretty decent. We don't really have that much that we want to pitch to it, but if this is a matchup where Commandeer is good, then this hand is going to be great. Turn one is probably going to be Steam Vents, Serum Visions. We just really want to set up more lands so we can get to, well, first Mikokoro and then Jace. Hopefully this is a matchup where Commandeer shines. Talaria West, I think that's a good sign for us. All right, that's also probably a good card for us. Hmm. Interesting, so we can play the Howling Mine next turn and that digs us as deep as bottoming the Howling Mine. I guess that's our play. So bottom the Time Warp, top the Mine. Just really need to hit our third land drop so that we can continue hitting land drops afterwards. Chalice on one. Commandeering that does nothing. And it also, I mean, I guess it's fine against us, but it's not backbreaking or anything. Already got our Serum Visions. Sure, we can't Snapcast our Serum Visions next turn, but we really want to dictate anyway. So we definitely can lose this game pretty easily if our opponent has enough uh, land destruction. I think they generally run Tectonic Edge and Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter, obviously, the much less effective one, but if they have, you know, a Crucible of Worlds plus a lot of land destruction, you can definitely get to the point where you just can't fetch out basics anymore and we're a pretty mana hungry deck, so if we if we miss too many land drops, then we are going to lose this game. Oh, you know what? We have Commandeer. I I can't uh, can't F six here. If the opponent plays something like an engineered explosives, then unfortunately we are kind of obligated to take it with the commandeer uh the reason being we just need to hit a land so drawing that second card off the howling mine this turn is really important if we don't hit a land things are looking pretty grim if we do of course then it really just depends on what our opponent's doing and who knows what our opponent is up to It's a little unfortunate that our opponents are all taking so long. I can already tell that this video is going to be super long. Welding jar. Okay, don't care about that one. Our 
opponent is about to cast a war for two. I'm not sure exactly what that hits. Probably Sorceress Spyglass, if I had to guess. The main issue is that because we... Oh. Opponent's not worrying? Interesting. They're going to worry... Oh, they're going to wear out a draw step so that they have more information. Anyway, the unfortunate part is because Howling Mine is our only artifact, if we commandeer it, we're really just... Uh... All right, we need a land. Crap. All right. Uh. Yeah, we're in a lot of trouble. Uh, anyway... If we commandeer the word, it's more of a counterspell than a uh, than an actual commandeer like it should be because we can't get the Howling Mine, it's already on the battlefield. So our opponent's going to worry here. Um, the main incentive we have to commandeer this is so that we don't discard, I guess. That's not really a big deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up a deck list real quick and just double check that... There's not something more scary that I'm thinking of, or that I'm not thinking of. Let's see. So we've got Chalice of the Void, Engineered Explosives, Mr. Bobble, Mox Opal, Tormod's Crypt, Welding Jar, Expedition Map, Grafticker's Cage, Pithing Needle, Pirate Spellbond, Damping Sphere on the main deck. Wow. Sorcerer Spyglass, Crucible of Worlds, and Snaring Bridge, Bottle Cloister, Witchbane Orb. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think we care too much. I think we're going to let our opponent Sorcerer Spyglass and we're probably going to discard Snapcaster Mage, I guess. Oh, you know what? We should just cast a Snapcaster Mage. Our opponent is gonna opponent is gonna know what's up. Our opponent is going to know that we're not spending the mana on anything. So Yeah, our Snapcaster is also looking pretty embarrassing right now because we have so little mana. And even once we hit our next land, we won't be able to snap Serum Visions because of the uh because of the chalice. So yeah, this looks like just cast Snapcaster and then try to take something better with that commandeer maybe we take a crucible of worlds or something that would be cool i think our opponent's going to name jace here they could also name me kokoro as a card that they see and if they're really looking ahead they can name scalding tarn and just try to really get us I think if I were them, I would name Jace, though. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Go, go, Snapcaster Mage. All right, opponent, do your worst. Can't F6 still, since the opponent knows about Commandeer now. I wonder what our opponent is going to do differently to try to play around it. Witchbane Orb. That stops our exhaustion, but we can just pitch that to Commandeer later. Uh, yeah, I don't think I care about that at all. Destroy all curses. Oh, man. What are we going to do? All right, there we go. It's a good thing our opponent didn't really get us with that naming uh, Scalding Tarn like I mentioned earlier. Let's see. Might as well get in. Um. Hmm. Thinking if there's any reason to crack now, I don't think there is. Uh, this exhaustion we can't cast anymore, so goodbye. Oh, I guess that Serum Visions also gets countered. Well, I guess we'll pitch that one to Commandeer. Oh yeah, there we go. Jace is useless, Serum Vision is useless. We, we figured it out. Okay, neat.
So we are a little bit incentivized to fetch steam vents here over island because the opponent is probably playing ghost quarter and uh, crucible and could try to ghost quarter crucible us. So I think I am going to do that. I don't think our life total matters at all. I'm also pretty unsure of what's in our opponent's hand. Oh, did I fall for something? We're for four. I'm gonna check my handy dandy deck list one more time, see if there's anything I care about. Let's see, Bottled Cloister, Ensnaring Bridge, Crucible, Sorcerer Spyglass. I do care about Crucible. Um, that might be reason enough to take that here. Yeah, Crucible into Inventor's Fair going off and... Hmm. Yeah, I don't really care about the Ensnaring Bridge right now. We can always bounce that later. The Crucible definitely sounds like it would be a problem, though. Yeah, all right. Unfortunate. Howling Mine is already on the battlefield. So we're gonna shock ourselves for this and then play a dictate, try to miracle a temporal mastery and then play a land. That's not quite it. Uh, really gonna try hard to draw land and I am so not good at this game. All right, well, we can pinch the opponent on cards by Giga Drowsing our own Howling Mine at their upkeep. Uh, given that the opponent has so many more lands than we do, especially since we only have two blue sources, I think that's what I'm going to do. So the way this works with Chalice is the original copy is going to get countered, but the replicate copies, of which there is one, will not get countered. So I'm just going to same targets this and let the opponent do their thing. The annoying part is we still can't F6 so that the opponent thinks we have another uh, Commandeer or something, which we will bring in from the sideboard. But man, we really needed a land. Wow. Yeah, we started with two lands in hand and we've gone through another how many cards? <laughs> Laria West, huh? Not sure what our opponent's getting. Maybe Tormod Script? Tectonic Edge. Oh. Oh. Of course. All right. Wow. Just wow. Okay. I guess we're discarding this unresolvable lightning bolt um yeah this is extremely rough so i guess we're gonna cast a dictate here uh one thing that could definitely go wrong at some point is our opponent can discard an artifact to this artificer's intuition get a mox opal discard another artifact artifact get a uh an engineered explosives put the e on two hit our snapcaster hit our howling mine that's definitely not good. Uh, can they also make other colors? They can probably put it on three and hit all of our dictates, but if we're gonna flash in dictated end step, then you know we'll be able to do stuff. So the really bad part about missing the land drops this early is 
now our deck has way more lands than it should have. It's like 50% lands now almost. Uh, let's see, there's four lands out. Yeah, it's 19 out of 39 cards are lands. So even if we do start casting time warps, which are a little ways away because of this tectonic edge, we're kind of far away from actually uh, actually being able to not fizzle. Tormod's Crypt. All right, well, that's not a thing that I care about. Discarding Damping Sphere. Mox Opal. Alright, this is one way things go wrong. Yep, there's the Opal. I guess we'll take that one here. We already did Tech Edge, that thing, that thing. Alright, what's happening now? This looks, this looks like an EE on two to me. Yep. All right, well, with an EE on two, that's a good time to play another permanent that costs three. Okay can't do this in the right order ever so because of this tech edge we are going to lose probably Mikokoro um, there's not really too much we can do about that we could cryptic command to bounce it but I think it's better to hold cryptic in hand uh, yeah if we're not going to cast cryptic I guess we scry Land is nice, but we already have two now. Huh. Got nine cards in hand. That's kind of rough. Let's see, did they blow up their spyglass? No, they welding journey? No, they haven't done this yet. Okay. I think we want to keep temporal mastery in hand because our opponent might blow up their spyglass. Um Jeez. Opponent has Tormod's Crypt, so. Oh, I didn't attack. Oops. Thinking out loud a little bit too much. Alright, that's fine. If we lose by two points, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Uh, I don't think Snapcaster Mage is doing much, and uh, we're going to draw a lot of lands, I think. This feels a little bit wrong, but I do think we're going to draw a lot of lands. I guess the Inventor's Fair plus the Engineered Explosives makes that beat down. Ooh. Believe that's game. Yeah, there's no way we'll be able to have four mana up to counter that. So let's just save ourselves some time. All right. Commandeer is great. Engineered is fine. Surgical is surprisingly powerful because of... Uh, Academy Ruins and the other thing. Which Electrode gives us a way to win the game through an ensnaring bridge. Hmm. Thing in the Ice is not great. Neither is Crackling Drake. I'll put one of each in since I think we're mostly getting rid of bad cards. Bad cards like Lightning Bolt. Exhaustion doesn't do that much. 
Exhaustion doesn't do that much against Mox Opal decks and is not great against uh, against a deck without creatures. I'll take out one Snapcaster because they had Tormod's Crypt and one more. We really want lands. I'll take out one Giga Drowse because the opponent basically covers us in terms of having more mana sources than we do with Mox Opal. Um, we can also sometimes work on a very small number of lands, and they have War of Invention at instant speed. All right, that's good to me. Going first. Sand has Jelectro, Jace, three lands. It's not a lot, but we get to Sulphur Falls, so Sulphur Falls, Mikokuro, so I think that's key. We're also up on time against our opponents. This is really weird. I feel like I'm playing very slow as I try to try to explain all my thoughts like not f6ing because the opponent knows about commandeer and yet somehow our opponents are still playing interesting still playing slower than us um so if we don't draw an untapped land i think i am just going to play gelectrode next turn because we'll still have mikokura up for after that let's see who did who they target with this oh okay maybe they just want their opal online that would be pretty smart too Cast with zero colors. Okay, just to get the opal online. And to whir for two. Okay, we can't do anything about it. And they know that now. Interesting. Defense grid. That makes Giga Drows a lot worse. Uh, I'm not sure how the opponent's exactly planning to win, so we'll figure this out. Like I said, I want to cast Gelectrode first. I, I figured the opponent was going to play a, um, a Pithing Needle effect for Jace, and it would be nice if they put it on Gelectrode instead for some weird reason. Uh, also, we get one more shot at an untapped land. It's pretty unusual that we would not have an untapped land at this point. Uh, the other thing we get is we have Mikokoro. Our opponent doesn't really do anything. I'm not sure if that defense grid does as much as our opponent thinks it does. That's some cool art. I don't think I've ever seen the uh, the invention art before. Nice defensive grid there. All right, uh, Chalice on one. Yep, can't do anything. All right, let's try to draw untapped land for Jace. Untapped land, that counts. Said that counts. Hmm. Yeah, that's just zero. I don't think there's any reason to do anything else. All right. Yeah. I think this is the worst card, and we don't want our opponent to name Misty Rainforest with a uh, with a Pithic Needle effect if they happen to have a thousand of those somehow. All right. We've established our 20 turn clock. Let's go. I think there's a good chance our opponent might be casting Tezzeret this turn. We'll see. No, just, uh, what is this? Worrying for something? War for two. I'm going to delectrate the opponent just in case. I don't think there's anything else we would need to Gelectrode. Still feel like the uh, the Pithing Needle is going to be the best thing. Just put it on Jace. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. The opponent knows our hand. 
We're also going to play that Misty that we're drawing so we don't draw the Gemstone Caverns after it. Uh, we could time warp here, but that doesn't really do much. So instead, I'm going to wait and then play the Dictate and then warp after that. Also, if we draw a land and the opponent doesn't interact, we'll get to snap warp the following turn, assuming we draw another untapped land in the next, like, four cards. Interesting. What does that mean? White? What the? Is this some kind of crazy engineered explosives? Oh, that's just Tesseract. Okay. Well, that's fine then. I don't care about that. What you animating? Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Opponent has two cards in hand, one of which is Mox Opal. That seems pretty all right for us. Right, so we're going to do this. I'm going to cast a Dictate. Oh, shoot. I forgot about that, uh, that defense grid that I said wasn't doing so much. All right, well, now I feel like an idiot. Huh. So you know how I said we're not drawing that gemstone caverns? Anyway, now I am going to time warp, and the reason is I want to kill that Tesseract. So time warp will let us do that, because we get to untap Gelectrode, and then hit it for one more. Should always yes this again. Come for one more, and we take an extra turn. Um, what are we doing? Oh, you know what? I forgot to meet Kokoro on our opponent's last turn. This is all sorts of embarrassing. All right. Anyway, we can actually cryptic through this defense grid, so I think we're just going to leave up cryptic or dictate. Yeah, this is just all sorts of embarrassing. I guess we also have Dictate plus... Oh, no. Defense Grid. Hmm. All right. I don't think we're going to mill out. Hey, opponent, remember that spell we couldn't cast? Guess what it is. All right, so now we get Snapcaster Time Warp, and hopefully our opponent doesn't have a Surgical Extraction or something. Let's ping the opponent. Let's always yes this. And let's, oh, should have pinged the opponent again. Oops. I feel silly. Hmm. All right, we'll go to attacks before casting spells and activating Mikokoro. The reason is we don't want our opponent to get a whir. Ping the opponent first. Time warp ourself. Make sure we don't cast Mikokoro. All right, untap that. We get an extra turn. We'll both draw a card. So notably, that def of course, that defense grid does uh, does make the opponent's spells more expensive on our turn. Also, so that's one thing to bear in mind. Hmm, 
What if our opponent drew were? It seems like they're thinking real hard. It seems like they drew were. All right, let's see what they were for. Or are they just inventors pairing? No, they tapped artifacts. They have work. Or X4. You've got it, buddy. Well, that makes this Gelectrode end, of course. This exhaustion a little worse. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we play this, we have 10. That's enough for Temple Mastery and Mikokoro. All right, nice. I guess I should have played the fetch land since deck thinning is more important than the shuffle, given that uh, given that Jace's offline has been offline for ages. All right, that's all we've yielded to this now that Jelectro isn't doing anything for us. All right, we'll attack with Snapcaster and we'll draw with Mikokoro. Ooh, okay, what does this do? Ooh, what does that do? I think that kills the opponent. All right, let's try to win the next game. I don't think we need to change anything here. Seemed pretty good. Oh, this is rough. Only one land, but a lot of sweet cards. I don't think we can keep it. We're too likely to be punished for keeping that hand. This hand is not great, but we'll see what we can do. That is not good. All right, I'm going to that shock on this just so that we're less likely to mess up our scry with what less likely to mess up our scry with the shock land or with a fetch land rather wow that is not good let's see looked at us ha huh. we don't even know what that card is okay okay all right so they know about the dictate they don't know about the rest of our hand and they targeted us with that other bobble, so they know about the card that we don't yet. Neat. So Spellskite, notably, is pretty good against Gigadrows, and also Gelectrode. Um, we're just going to cast Dictate, though, I think. That seems... Yeah, Gelectrode isn't really going to do anything in the face of this. Then again, if the opponent's not playing lands, we're less incentivized to cast this Dictate so that we just have a bigger board presence when the opponent eventually gets to four mana and maybe casts a thing. Actually, I'm just going to cast this Gelectrode. Um, the reasons being, again, the opponent was missing land drops, so we're less incentivized to cast this Dictate. Our hand is really weak, so we probably won't be able to go off. Uh, 
And if our opponent, ooh. Okay. And uh, it has four cards in hand. I think we're going to have a tough time emptying that. All right, it looks like we are not going to get to draw a card with this Crackling Drake, but I think that's okay. But yeah, um, having creatures on board before the opponent gets a Planeswalker down, I think, is pretty important. And Tor Torpor Orb actually doing something. That's kind of cool. Uh, opponent is at four mana. Let's see that Tezzeret. It's also kind of funny. We have to be really, really careful with uh, Crackling Drake and Ensnaring Bridge. <laughs> right now it only has one power. The opponent has four cards in hand. Looks like, ooh, rough. Okay, let's do that before they gain Hexproof, I guess. Or is this something different? Okay, yeah. That is a okay. Um. Yeah, this Gagadrow is looking awfully terrible in the face of that spell skite. Our opponent just pays a bunch of life. Opponent has three cards in hand. The only other instant or sorcerer we can get in the yard is Gagadrow, so I think we just attack with the. Good old Crackling Drake. We could, I think we're gonna play a Steam Vents Tapped. We still have some cards at the bottom that we don't like. So this Misty Rainforest is actually not gonna do any deck thinning and actually it's going to make our card quality worse. Yeah, drawing exhaustion right now would feel pretty bad. All right, let, let's show that spell sky who's boss. Take that. Oh, wow, I didn't cast Dictate. <laughs> I feel so stupid. Okay. Um, yeah, same deal, nothing else to do. Let's make our opponent take one. Okay, that's nice, that's nice. Finally going to draw it in the right order. Our opponent with the whir. I don't think they can whir here for anything that we really care about. You get what, like ensnaring bridge or something? I should not have f6 and I should have put an end step stop all right well we'll see how this goes oh they already have bridge I forgot about that All right, I'm sorry for playing this game so poorly. I gotta get my head back in the game. So does my opponent, apparently, who doesn't exactly know how to tap mana. Been there. Uh, yeah, so we can't cast this Dictate now because of that defense grid that I allowed to resolve. Speaking of getting my head in the game, I should have cast this Dictated Upkeep so we could have drawn another card. But instead, here we are. I think it's time to focus. Uh, Ange Electrode really isn't doing anything. Yep. Feeling dumb. Let's try to not make more mistakes. Play the Misty because we do want more blue sources for better Giga Drowses, even though you know the opponents aren't really gonna do anything. Alright, what's going on? Or 
were for three. Okay. All right, they're probably going to name Misty Rainforest now. So another misplay on my part. Maybe it'll name Electrode. I don't know. OK. So I'm not going to crack the uh, Misty yet. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, so Crackling Drake is going to get outside of, uh, boy. It's going to get outside of ensnaring bridge range pretty soon, so we got to be aware of that. So let's see, we have almost certainly going to uh, use Jace and then crack this. So we have three, four, five, six, seven. I'm running out of time. It's game three, right? Okay. Try to play a little bit faster. Um, oh, that Electro is looking pretty bad. This cryptic is looking pretty good. Uh, we can't actually cryptic on our opponent's turn, though. So might as well serum visions. These cards are looking pretty bad. And we get in with the drake. All right, well, the opponent is going to have more cards in hand at least, so it's going to be a little harder to empty the hand, but I don't know. The opponent has, what, four mana to work with? It's kind of a lot. Also, we can't really do anything because of that defense grid, so I don't think there's any point in not of sixing, especially since we only have six minutes and a little bit left. Oh, boy. This looks like uh, Tezzy McReady. Well, the good news is if the opponent uses the uh, turn a thing into a 5-5 five -five ability, uh, A, it can't attack because of ensnaring bridge, and B, we get to bounce whatever they animate with Jace. All right, where is Tezzeret going? All right, the good news now is this presumably adds another card in our opponent's hand. So that ensnaring bridge gets a little bit worse. Puts no cards in hand. OK. Let's see here. Opponent has three cards in hand. This Temporal Mastery will put Crackling Drake outside of uh, outside of ensnaring bridge range, but we can't not do this. Or can we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, nine. So thing in the ice, temporal mastery. Bounce spell skite. Attack the opponent. Yeah, I think that's nothing doesn't actually do anything because uh because of ensnaring bridge. Alright, yeah, we're just gonna cast this. the skite and I guess we can bounce this thing let's see we bounce this thing which electrode yeah I should have thought about this a little bit harder we bounce this thing we hit with which electrode yeah I think that's lethal just return to opponent to its owner's hand draw a card Just got to not mess this up. 
So this will be the fifth card in hand for uh, Ensnaring Bridge, so Cracking Drake can attack with five. And, oh, the opponent is Hexproof. Shoot. All right, that's unfortunate. All right, guess we're pinging that then. Well, we don't really have anything anyway, so let's do this. Uh, we can't exhaustion the opponent. We can, however, uh, cryptic command something, which is nice. Cryptic command, say the Witchbane orb, and then we cast a Gary Drowse. Yeah, I think that's lethal. Oh, yeah. Just make sure there's nothing else I'm missing. All right, bounce the Witchbane Orb. Opponent has six cards in hand. Attack with Cracking Drake on six. They go to one, ping him with Electrode. There we go. Figured it out. Can I bounce over here? Draw a card. Yep. Witchbane Orb. Disbane Orb. Hmm. Put those on top in the wrong order. All right, nice. See you for round five. All right, here we are for the last match. We've lost the die roll. Uh, this hand is pretty medium. We got three lands, which is nice, and a Serum Visions and a Lightning Bolt. Um, Portal Master I'm not liking. The lack of a Howling Mind I'm not liking. I'm going to keep it on the strength of Serum Visions and possibly Lightning Bolt. Looks like Death Shadow or Hollow One. Probably Hollow One. Yeah, so we can't bolt that this turn, which is unfortunate. Um, hmm. So I'm mainly concerned about uh, the draw and discard randomly thing. If we play Sulphur Falls, we just need to not discard Lightning Bolt. If we play, but that means we can't Serum Visions this turn. If we play Sulphur Falls, we can't do anything this turn, but it means we're a lot more likely to have Bolt live. Yeah, I like that. I think we can just Serum Visions Bolt next turn. Hopefully they don't do anything too crazy. All right. It'd be pretty weird if they had a hollow one this turn, since they had Street Wraith last turn. I guess it means they would have top decked Faithless Looting, so hopefully it's just a, a blood ghast and a medium sized flame blade adept coming at us. Oh. Maybe it's a big flame blade adept, and maybe we are going to face down some hollow ones. Hmm. Yeah, this is not looking good for us. Alright. Giga Drives would have been nice. Notably, this would have been five points different on the player of the draw. We would have bolted this, and we would have Serum Visions on turn one, bolted this on their turn two when they went to attack for five. So kind of unfortunate that our opponent got to empty their hand this fast, but we'll play with what we got. Uh, so Giga Drives is not very good here. We are almost certainly going to bolt the Flame Blade Adept, so of course, just every time. Um... Let's see, next turn we can Serum Visions and then Giga Drow's two things. We can draw the island so that we can follow that up with Mind Sculptor, Bounce Hollow One. Uh, it's not great because then Jace dies to Bloodgast. It's also not great because then that strands these two Temporal Masteries in our hands, but I think it's the best we've got. All right, let's not forget to play that land. What? Oh, we already played a land. Of course, of course.
let's see what we hit. Okay, Snapcaster actually changes a lot. Um, let's see. So next town, next turn, we Giga Drowse, Hollow One, and maybe Flame Blade Adept, depending on how big it is. The following turn, we Snapcaster Mage bolt the Flame Blade Adept, and then probably don't block and take six going down to. I mean, maybe take two, so going down to something. And then we'll have Jace bounce hollow one with Snapcaster as a blocker. We died a bolt, but the opponent has one card in hand. We can't really play around much. And now let's remember to play that land. So no cover island, obviously. Gotta trick the opponent into thinking we're Storm up until we cast this Giga Drowse, obviously. All right, so now we're definitely tapping the Flame Blade Adept because it's as big as the Bloodgast. Yeah, so I want to note just how different this game would be if we had five more life, if this was a nice little 14 here instead of a nine. We'd be looking pretty okay. So we're going to Serum Visions, draw that Snapcaster Mage, and see what else is up. Um, Exhaustion's kind of nice. Not that nice, though, because, well, hmm. No, I think we just need fifth land for the Time Warp in our hand. Yeah, I think we just need a land. All right, so if we don't chump, we die to bolt. But I think because our plan is to Jace bounce this anyway, we just can't really play around it. So hopefully our opponent just doesn't have anything good. Maybe just a handful of hollow boys would be nice. Check the graveyard real quick. Yeah. All right. We're going to take six, go to one. OK. So this matchup's a little tough. Uh, they don't actually rely on the graveyard that much, but we basically have to board this in anyway for the Phoenix and the Bloodgasts. Engineered Explosives isn't very good. Gelectrode and Is It Staticaster are not very good. Uh, Crackling Drake is okay, but not amazing. Thing in the Ice is fantastic, so that's going to be our plan. Um, a Braid hits Hollow One. Need to keep some number of Lightning Bolts for uh, for Flame Blade Adept, but because we added a Braid, I'm going to trim one. Commandeer is not great. Uh, yeah, taking Faithless Looting just doesn't feel nearly as good as taking a Cathartic Reunion, so... That's gone. We're lowering our curves. We're going to take out some warps. We're going to take out some dictates. We're going to take out Howling Mine and hope the opponent brings an artifact destruction. Uh, we could take out Snapcaster Mage. Hmm. Yeah, we could take out one Snapcaster for the opponent, bringing in a little bit of graveyard disruption, keep a dictate in. If we do that, we probably want one more warp. Let's see, what can we cut for a warp? Mm. Let's cut a Giga Drowse for a warp. This is more art than science. All right, let's try it like that. Yes, we will go first. Ugh. This hand isn't good. One land, nothing to do with it. Yeah. 
rough. I'm really good at having temporal mastery in my opening hand. Uh, I don't like this hand, but gotta keep it. At least we got that. Okay, Snapcaster is probably good. I think it's worth. No, I don't think it's it's worth shocking on this. I'm gonna play the Steam Guns tapped. I think our our life matters. I don't want to play a fetch land because that's gonna shuffle away the Snapcaster that I think is gonna be good. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is. Now we're going to use a fetch land, get an island. We're doing this first so that we don't mess up our scry. We're going to try really hard to draw a lightning bolt so that we can zap the flame blade before it, of course. All right, so there goes our plan of uh, Snapcaster Serum Visions next turn. For what it's worth, this is the reason I only run three of these, and I feel like it happens far too often. Um, our play next turn is just going to be Thing in the Ice, Cascade Bluffs, and hope we don't get a massive beating. After that, we'll play Temporal Mastery and Snapcaster Mage. Or sorry, Temporal Mastery and Polluted Delta, and then after that, probably Snapcaster Mage Serum Visions, but we'll see what we draw, I guess. Interesting, we're taking one. Oh, the opponent rolled into a block, that's right. Maybe they just don't have anything good in hand? Oh, maybe they're just waiting until it deals twice as much damage. All right, so like I said, Cascade Bluffs thing in the ice, so we can next turn draw that Temporal Mastery. All right, that's rough. This is eight damage, we go to 10. Yeah. All right, there's, there's no sense in pretending we got anything. There's, there's no bolts here. Oh man, there's more. Oh. Didn't notice that. I guess that would have been good to look at. Okay, we can't block because of Menace. And we need to draw something good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crack this because if we're gonna win this game, we're gonna need mana. All right, Cryptic, that counts as something good, I think. We're probably going to tap our opponent's team and draw a card. Um, is this better than Snapcaster Serum Visions? Right now, probably. Snapcaster better than a random card? I think so because it gets a Serum Visions next turn, so I think I'm going to have to counter tap. These Temporal Masteries are really bad. We're so far away from casting them. Okay. Now we're dead on board unless we draw something. And there's something. That's uh Okay, so we can't just like bolt snap serum visions. Um 
let's see. Can we if we both snap bolts that the opponent takes six and hmm. Basically trying to figure out where these bolts go. So the first bolt can kill something, but the second bolt cannot. Uh, because everything is going to bounce with thing in the ice. So it's possible that some number of bolts should just go face, uh, either one or two. Alternatively, we could kill one flame blade adept and then go face. Um, let's see. One thing that's tough here is I think we might need to wait until our opponent's combat step so that we don't get hit by a flame weak phoenix and then get bolted. That's kind of rough though because then our thing in the ice is going to attack into blockers and that's just so much worse than attacking into nothing. I feel like it's the most conservative play we could make here. Don't know makes it good. Might just need to try rushing them. We can bolt snap bolt down to nine. Thing in the ice attacks down to two. Yeah, Snapcaster doesn't really do anything after that. I guess Snapcaster Serum Visions draw a bolt. But if the opponent draws hmm. I guess the opponent's default play then is to just flame blade adept hit us for two with the phoenix then they would get to block the flipped thing in the ice with flame blade adept and attack us with with the phoenix down to three and then they would get to play the next phoenix the following turn attack us down to dead that's not very good all right yeah i think i have to take the more conservative line and Bolt a flame blade adept on our opponent's turn during their combat, and then Snapcaster bolt their face. One of the cool things here is this does bounce the Snapcaster, which means we will get to Snapcaster Serum Visions. Um, so that's cool. Actually, maybe the greedy play is to have Bolt snap Serum Visions on my turn, attacked for seven. The opponent is at five. No, snap, snap Serum Visions doesn't get us that far. All right. Doesn't work out as well as I thought it did. also doesn't work out as well as I want it to. Uh, we can't cast that Surgical Extraction or we die. We also probably can't attack with this Awoken Horror or we die. just so happens that casting the Serum Visions would have worked out a lot nicer. I don't know if that's true in the general case. Oh, that's rough. We also just don't have enough mana for all of this. 
All right, let's see. We know we've got the Flame Lake Phoenix in hand. We cannot win with these cards because we're going to take four down to one. All right. That is rough. one hmm. that's not good enough there's two menace creatures two blind creatures all right good games opponent well that was a disappointing two three in this league but hopefully you enjoyed seeing this deck in action thanks i'll see you for the next video